Welcome back to Morning Joe, 46 past the hour. And here with us now, Democratic Senator from North Dakota and Chairman of the Senate Budget Committee, Senator Kent Conrad. Good times. How are you? Good. Good to be with you. Well, yeah. good times unless you're sitting in your position. I put where, it in quotes. Where we have yet, and you've been fighting this fight for a very long time. We've talked about it, you and I, for a decade now. And we were complaining about $200 billion, $300 billion deficits. We just had another deficit come in mm. over a trillion dollars. Yeah. When's this going to end? It's going to end when we sort of summon up the will to do something about it. You know, you and I were complaining that we were on an unsustainable course before the economic downturn. Uh, when there's an economic downturn, as we've just had, revenue goes down, spending goes up. That's what we've seen. We've got the highest spending in 60 years as a share of the economy. We've got the lowest revenue in 60 years as a share of the economy. So we're going to have to work both sides of the equation, and none of it's going to be very popular. So how, how much do the spending projects that were put in place in 08 and 09 by President Bush and Barack Obama, these quick jolts to the economy, how long till those numbers flush out of the system and the deficit starts going down? Uh, largely out at the end of this year. 75% of the money went out in the first three years of the Recovery Act. And let me just say, I, I know this is a place you and I differ. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that TARP and stimulus were essential. Had they not been done, I believe we'd be in a depression now. And now I've got support from two of the most distinguished economists in the country, Alan Blinder, who was number two at the Federal Reserve, Mark Zandi, who advised McCain in the last campaign. The two of them just did an analysis and concluded, had we not done TARP and stimulus, unemployment today would be 15 percent. We'd have eight million fewer jobs, and we'd be in a depression. And by the way, Senator, on the TARP issue, uh, yeah. The one thing we have been talking about here is that the federal government actually has made money off of the banks. In fact, if you just look at the money they loaned to Wall Street, and you can speak to this, the United States government has never made more money on any program than they did loaning to and the banks on Wall Street. In a quicker period of time, they get paid back their money with interest. You know, we are, we're going to make money on the banks, uh, some say $16 billion. Uh, Secretary of the Treasury has said as much as $28 billion. We're going to make the taxpayers of the United States going to make money. Yeah. One other uh, not, data. Not obviously not on AOG, AIG or Fannie and Freddie, but just no. on the banks no. we're going to make, we're gonna make to, money. To, you know, obviously the, the money went three places, right. largely banks, AIG, and went to and the TSC's. auto companies, yeah. which started with, of course, the Bush administration. Right. But I, I think one thing that's very important for us to remember at the end of 2008, we were having negative economic growth of almost 7%. That's now positive, 1.6 or 7%. We were losing, the first month of 2009, 800,000 private sector jobs a month. The most recent numbers were up to a positive 64,000. And the markets themselves have recovered by 70%. So I think if we're looking for data points on what's worked, the overall plan has largely worked, not as well as we would all have Why liked. We should have done more. Mika, One place you and I strongly yeah. agreed, we should have done more on infrastructure. Exactly. I argued strenuously for at least $200 billion in infrastructure because you get a double hit. You get economic growth, you get jobs, but more than that, you improve the efficiency of the United States. You do. And, uh, you know, Mika, I guess the question is this, because we've been debating this foreign money issue. Mm -hmm. I just wonder why the White House isn't making this argument. Well, that's actually... Which is, we stopped America's economy from falling off the cliff. Well, that was my question for you. Uh, the last segment we were d debating this, I mean, you speak very articulately and with great detail about where we could have gone yeah. and why we didn't. And you credit this presidency with being able to... To do that, keeping can, us can I just say, not just this presidency, but if we're going to be truthful about it, it started in the Bush presidency at the end. I mean, I was in the room. I was called to an emergency meeting in the Capitol when the Secretary of the Treasury, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, were there. This and there were the leaders of the Paulson, House and the Senate. Hank yeah. Paulson and uh, this is the fall of 2008. And Ben Bernanke. This, I mean, is, ben, Bernanke, this yeah. is Hank Paulson and Ben Bernanke. And they told us they're taking over AIG the next morning. And they told us that if they did not, they believed there would be a financial collapse. Right. Then we went into the TARP negotiations. I was there 
the, when we went almost all Saturday night after several weeks of negotiations, Secretary of the Treasury, Paulson, under Bush, was with us. And he was getting messages every half hour about major financial institutions in the world that were going down that night. We were told if Isn't we did amazing? not come up with a solution by 5 o'clock Sunday evening, yeah. the Asian markets would open and they would collapse, that our own markets would open the next morning and they would collapse. Now, I suppose you could say, well, I'm not going to worry too much about this. We don't need to do anything. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think you can no, say I that. Just, uh, I don't think so either. <laughs> Senator, and thankfully, you didn't. I was watching a um, ITN report. This is our partner in, in Britain. And right now, John Cameron is doing across-the-board cuts. Yeah. He is killing military projects. He went to a town hall with British military where one of them asked, I've done all these missions in Afghanistan. It was a really rough moment. Oh, I've done all these missions in Afghanistan, and you're killing my job. Yeah. You're cutting my job. But he said, hey, this is what we have to do. And this was a point. If Great Britain can put everything on the table, I always hear you guys say, oh, yeah, we'll do entitlements. But when I ever hear everything, I never hear defense. If you're really going to get a handle on this spending issue, discretion, non-discretionary spending is not, the, is not the way to go, correct? Well, let's keep in mind discretionary spending is a very small part. That's only one in every six dollars of federal spending. And frankly, discretionary spending, as Joe well knows, has been going down, and Harold well knows, has been going down it's as a share of this too. And so actually it, going it, down going as a down. share okay. of the overall uh, budget. What's been going up dramatically are the entitlements and the military. And look, if we're going to do something about this, everything does have to be on the table. I'm on this fiscal commission. Remember, we're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend. We are on a totally unsustainable track. We can't. Government is so going right. to have to be mm -hmm. smaller. There is no option. This Mr. is not. Mr. Chairman, we can't afford $2.8 billion in Afghanistan every week. No, and I'll tell you what we also can't afford. We can't afford the extraordinary administrative overhead that the Secretary of Defense himself has pointed to yeah. as a place that simply must be reduced. We need you to, to come back on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Thank you.